a sunburn. I've never worn a hat like this, but I could see how it would be really comfortable and practical. Do you ever come back from a hike and have your neck all burnt back your neck? You know, that's why they call them rednecks. Back in the day, they call them rednecks because those were the guys who worked in the field or women, I guess. And they would have sunburned necks. Hence, we're at rednecks. So here is going to be some pretty clear overlapping. We can do the under first. Because that's going to be in the background. But I'm going to be conscious of the strap here. Make sure not to go over that because that's in the front. That's attached to the front. That said, this other strap is attached to the back. This strap is attached to probably here. And this is attached here underneath this hat. I might make this lighter just to indicate that that's in the front and then I'm going to darken behind this to indicate the layering the um, what's in the foreground and what's in the background that's what helps with that that's one side That's what gives it depth. So there's a bit of overlapping here. I have to use my little pea brain to gather which one's going to be kind of in the front but in the back and kind of in the back but in the front. I've likened it to the Z index in web design where what's what comes first, what comes second. You want the things in the back to be darker because it's going to have less light on it think about it technically. All right. And I'm doing this because the edging on this hat is on top of the fabric of the hat, so I'm going to indicate that by just putting the shadow behind like on the inside of the hat and then along here give that a little edge This might be a hat I would wear when I start birding. I've become interested in birding this last year or so. <clears throat> and I was all ready to get right into it. I got a book for Christmas about how to identify birds, kind of basics. It was a Nat Geo book. And I'm been, I 
I've been reading, I joined the Audubon Society for five bucks a day. It doesn't cost much at all. It's whatever you can afford. And right now that's pretty much my, what I can afford. So I was all excited to get started. And then I went to REI. I found, well, first I found the binoculars I wanted through, you know, reviews and stuff and decided, oh, there's a pair of Nikons that are really good. And of course, Nikon is an excellent camera because of the lens they have so that Nikon's going to be a good quality binocular. So I was really excited. Let's see. I'm going to do the same thing with the edging here and just put that in the background and then I'll start deciding what to do with the rest of it. Just establish that hierarchy, so to speak. Yeah, so I got all excited. I went to REI because instead of Amazon, I'd rather, if it's all the same, because you get free shipping on more big ticket or bigger ticket items. I like big ticketer better. <laughs> See? And so I was all excited. I uh, go to REI because, you know, I was a member. I probably still am a member, but I haven't reaped the benefits of their, you know, accruing points or whatever of being a member. So anyway, I went to REI. I, I found them. They had them. I was all excited. Free shipping on orders over $100. These are very economically priced binoculars. They were, they're $139, I think. And I mean, that's bottom. You could get binoculars for, oh, you could, then the next step up would be like a $600 pair of binoculars, kind of like cameras. These, this would be the point and shoot of a binocular. And then you could spend thousands and thousands of dollars, but I was looking for the best value, a good pair of binos for a low price, something I could afford. So there we are, REI, order the binoculars, so excited. It says immediately I'm putting them in my cart. These are back ordered and they will be shipped to you in the next 30 days. Hmm. Okay, I guess it's a popular item. We're going through a you know, shelter in place. You can't do very much. It must be something that people are starting to do. So this is this is a good starting point for what's going to happen, and it's going to be layering. So um, let's get started. Now I'm going to start on this back piece being having a shadow underneath it. I ordered the binoculars. You don't get charged until they ship them. So, okay, cool. I can wait. I'm patient. I don't mind. I'm not going to... I don't need to go looking. And besides, when I did go back to Amazon to see if they could ship them right away, it was the same deal. It's another, you know, 30-day waiting, or they're back-ordered. So, I just stuck with my original plan and let it be. 30 days later, no binoculars, I get an email from REI canceling the whole order, saying, yeah, we don't know when we're going to get these at all, so we're just going to cancel your order, come back later. You know what would have been nice as an experienced designer? I, I might have said, we will notify you when we get uh, another when we going to get a next shipment or when we know that we're going to get deliveries but nothing like that just like whoop canceled your order I'm like oh okay hmm. I went directly to Nikon I found the same pair of binos same price same everything free shipping on a hundred dollars or more yay 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 let's do this crazy thing and so I did, and that was probably two months ago. 
they have not canceled my order. They were back ordered as well. Nikon, the manufacturer. So I'm guessing, because they don't tell you why it's back ordered, I'm guessing that with the COVID pandemic, sorry, was that rattling while I said that? During the, you know, during the COVID pandemic, you've got people being laid off and people not, if it's a factory, you're gonna have to have people in the factory, physically. And they probably put the kibosh on that. And now we're gonna put the, do the other side, other edge. And this is my little trick for not smearing the picture with my hand. So yeah, that was a few months ago and I haven't gotten my binoculars. I have not gotten a message saying they're being shipped yet. And I'm a little bit sad because I really want to see some cool birds. Yesterday, I took a really nice walk at Hayward Shoreline. Y'all know by now that I'm in Oakland, California. Hayward is just a quick drive to the east. So it's one of my favorite spots. And it's got a huge bird population because it's part of the Pacific Flyway. And it's got this, you know, the water. So there's a lot of water birds. It's right on the bay, a lot of water birds. Yesterday I was taking a walk and I stumbled upon a young birder looking through her scope with her parents. I didn't know that until I asked. I'm like, are you guys birders? And Dad said, she is, one of us is. And they were like, not copping to it, like, not me, not me. And what she had found, this young lady, Emma, had found a kind of an unusual bird for where we are. I don't know if it was a rare bird, I can't remember what she said, if it was rare, but it was unusual to find it on the coast. It was the, couldn't be on the coast, because the name of the bird is the oyster catcher, black oyster catcher. And she let me look through her scope and she focused it for me and everything, and lo and behold, there was this really beautiful black, oyster catcher with a bright orange beak and I saw it and I focused and oh it was really cool it's like this is my future I'll be able to do this eventually with when I want to get some equipment <laughs> All right. um, yeah so that was cool and I picked up a bunch of feathers that were on the ground and I want you guys to know, I looked it up, it is illegal to pick up any feathers, whether it's from carrion or, you know, where if you just found it randomly in a field, it's actually not legal. But if I, I won't tell anyone if you want to bring it home because I'm not, the reason is it's discouraging hunters from hunting hawks because if you're caught with a hawk that's illegal so they're like okay we're gonna make every aspect of <laughs> owning any part of this bird not lawful so that you're not enticed to kill a bird in order to have its feathers and that makes sense because uh, well, makes sense so here from here what I'm gonna do is give this little divot in here some shape. It's gonna be a little hard to do softly, but we might have to erase some hard lines, but I'm gonna give it a divot in here. Oh boy. Uh, already gonna. Because it goes like this. And that means there's going to be a little bit of a shadow inside that dip right in there. And so, yeah, 
if it's on your own property, I think there's no no issue. But if you're in a park and a ranger sees you and sees you with a handful of feathers, you might have a discussion. Hopefully he'll let you go with a warning and tell you, oh yeah, it's a little known fact that you can't actually have bird feathers of any kind in your possession. Of any kind. Not just rare birds, not just birds of prey or hawks or owls or anything like that. It said all birds where I read it. Anyway, just so that you guys are informed. That's the only reason I'm telling you. So you're informed. So it's a bit dramatic. So we'll extend it out to the high point. The high point's going to be pretty much there and there, which is what I have going on now. Well, I got these bird feathers. I'm not, they look like either owl or hawk. They're striped and they're tiny. I looked it up. I cannot tell you definitively what these feathers were. I tucked them into my ball cap inside the hem and off to my home they went with me. So that was cool. That was cool yesterday. I saw an owl fly right above me one day. Oh my gosh, it was the most amazing experience. Brought tears to my eyes. And yeah. All right, so now that we have that established, and I might even go make the high spot a little bit closer to here. I'll clean up the edges in a second. So someday I'll be able to look at these birds with my own equipment. In the meantime, I'll just have to enjoy seeing them with the naked eye. I went to a place in the Central Valley, only about an hour and ten outside of here. I think that's how long the drive was. To another wetland that was in the middle of nowhere, farm town. Farm town, like closer to Lodi. And I got there and instantly saw a blue heron. It's known for having a bunch of, it's like a bird place. So a blue heron. I wasn't even out of the parking lot and I had three hawks circling above my head. It's pretty amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Now I'm going to make the round, the head round. So, let's do this. I don't remember exactly what it was that got me interested in birding, but I'm already starting to think about things to do when I'm retired, <laughs> which is a long way away. But you can never plan too soon, too early, right? Am I right? Am I right? I'm right. I know I'm right. I'm right, right? Yeah. I'm uh, going to build a schoolie just so that I know that I have a place to rest my head, kind of my ace in the hole situation. I mean, ideally, I would, you know, win the lottery and <laughs> be able to buy a big old home or three, wherever I wanted. But I'm kind of into survival. Since as an artist, that's been my MO for man m many of my years. I like being scrappy. I think it's kind of fun. Um, we're gonna keep going with this. 
I want to take get it from this side. So I'm like, okay, when I'm old and my knees don't work well anymore, where what, what am I gonna what's gonna be interesting to me? I'll probably do a bunch of planar pastel painting, which I've done once and it's really fun. But I'm up to other stuff right now. I can't I have a bad tendency of thinning myself out too much, having too many things I'm interested in. Um, so I'm like, alright, we'll, we'll leave the pastel painting until I'm older. And besides, most of the pastel artists are on the older side anyway, it's like retirees. But there are some young ones, don't get me wrong. It's a wonderful, wonderful, you know, uh, style of art, I guess, method of, method of art, but it's mostly plein air. You're going to see the majority of pastel, part of, pastel artists be, um, yeah. All right, there's pretty much a round cap. And so we are going through a heat wave and my camera shut off uh, because it was too hot. So I'm back and I went ahead and filled in the whole, this area here. Um, which was the right thing to do anyway because it would have taken too long to include that in the video. So what I'm going to do to wrap this up is this little band area and then the this is a little detail that has stitching on it so I'm going to let that pop just a little. Oh, it always, I want to do it just a little and then I do it a lot. <laughs> But this is what Photoshop's for. You can pull it into Photoshop and adjust all these things. But that's not the purpose of what I'm doing. What I'm doing is just to do exactly what I'm doing. It's for the purpose of doing this, not for the end result necessarily. So you s nah, see, that's a little bit too heavy. And so. And I guess this is probably the same as a gum eraser in a way. And I'll fill this back in just a touch. And all I'm really doing is sh showing that this is a separate piece of fabric right here. So now I'll add the stitching. I'll put that back in since all my shadowing kind of obscured it. And now we'll do here, finish up this band. So this band is going to have pop to the front like that. Derpy derp. And then I'm going to put the shadow for this right here. I'm going to also bring this down to here just to show that there is a transition and this is where the transition is going to happen and instead of just being the line see you don't even really notice what I just did but you can make a distinction between top and bottom of this hat so here because this is stitching I'm just going to indicate really lightly some stitching and then for that I'm just going to fill in these triangles with some fake stitching, embroidery type stuff. And here. And that should be sufficient. I think that looks pretty decent. And that's also the stitching. I'm gonna add some stitching on, on the, that detail. And like always, it's not perfect, but it's done for done for this purpose. And uh, 
I'm pretty happy with where, how it turned out. All right. So thanks, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Stay cool. Stay chill. And I will see you in the next, next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.